I love being Scottish so much. I decided that we needed some more Scotland content on this channel, so we're talking monsters today. Nessie in particular. <laughs> to my channel. If you're new here make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Victoria and usually I'm talking all things hockey and baseball related from across the pond in Scotland but for today's video we're mixing things up a little bit. I wanted to put some more Scotland content out on here and I had somebody request that. I actually had a few people request more Scotland content and I had one person in particular request a video about the Loch Ness Monster. So that's what we're going to do today. I want to make my content very much about like my life in general and like I'm Scottish, I love Scotland and I know that a lot of people who watch my videos are also interested in Scotland so I can definitely do that and today we're talking Nessie because it's a topic that I, I love and let's just jump in to the legend of the Loch Ness Monster, shall we? So the Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie, is one of the world's best known creatures despite such few people actually seeing it. And it's become a really integral part of popular culture in the UK, but also in North America. And in general, Nessie is a feature of Scotland who has been shown in many films, TV shows, and generally, if you go to any type of gift shop in Scotland, you're going to find some Nessie stuff there. So where did the legend come from? Well, Scotland has always been linked in with folklore and with oral history. So even back to biblical times, monsters and legends have been a part of Scotland and the local culture. Other lochs actually have their own monsters. So you've got Morag and Loch Morar and Loch Aber. And you've also got silkies, kelpies and water horses and highland culture is very much rooted in sort of the earth, sort of earth, water, fire and air and very much in the landscape. That's sort of where highland culture was focused and so stories would be passed between people about various legends and monsters and creatures which lurked in said landscape. So it's clear that legends of monsters and stories have always been a really featured part of Scotland's heritage way back to biblical times in the Highland culture. And although the obsession with Nessie is a fairly recent phenomenon, it's believed that she's actually been around for more than 1500 years. And we know this because pre-Christian tribal societies such as the Picts had a strong belief system which was also rooted in the natural landscape. And we actually have Pict stones which depict a lot of the things that they saw and believed in at the time and the Loch Ness Monster actually appears on one of these as a sort of dragon-like figure with a long snout, flippers and a curled tail. And it's not really surprising when you look at Loch Ness because of the sort of dark atmosphere that surrounds the area. It's very unsurprising that people believe a monster lurks there. Steep mountains, a very deep body of water which is very murky because of high concentrations of peak sediment in the water. This is just the perfect environment for everyone to believe that a creature could exist. And Nessie sightings actually date back to the 6th century from none other than Saint Columba, who by the way brought Christianity over to Scotland, and he claimed to see a local being attacked by a beast who had risen up from the depths of the loch and he actually sort of defended the local I believe in this story. And you have to remember that Highland society at the time, Highland Gaelic society, was a very much an oral culture, so rather than stuff being written down, because most people were illiterate at that time, it was passed by word of mouth and told from generation to generation, and these stories and legends were passed down, and it turns into a little bit of Chinese whispers, of course, when you're passing things down by word of mouth, that things sometimes can get all mixed up, but this is how the legend of Nessie was passed down from so long ago. Fast forward a little bit more and the 1930s were really when the phenomenon of Nessie took hold. And on April 14th, 1933, an Inverness couple, the Mackays, were driving beside the loch 
When Mrs Mackay cried out to her husband and directed his attention towards the loch where a large creature was churning up the water which was otherwise tranquil so there was one part being churned up by something and the rest was all very peaceful and still which drew her attention to it and she later gave an interview where she described what she saw as it rolling and plunging for fully a minute, its body resembling that of a whale, and the water cascading it like a simmering cauldron. And so because of this, an article was published in the Inverness Courier under the headline, Strange Spectacle on Loch Ness, What Was It? Journalists and the media, of course, jumped on this bandwagon and they ventured up from all over, including London, all the way up to Scotland, up to Inverness, to try and get their own story about the monster. And America during this time was also very interested. The film King Kong had just been released and so everyone was fascinated by the prospect of a potentially real life monster. And sightings were becoming more frequently reported and interest reached such a peak that a £20,000 reward was offered to anyone who could capture Nessie alive. And to do this there were steel cages set up all around the shore around Loch Ness just to try and capture the creature and keep her in there, which makes me really sad. And the first photographs of Nessie were captured in November 1933 by a local man called Hugh Gray, although it's a very blurry image. And later in 1934, the most iconic picture of Nessie was captured by Robert Wilson, which is known as the surgeon's photograph. He was a gynaecologist from London and he captured this image, which is said to depict Nessie. It shows like her neck and sort of more of the humps and it's still seen as the most integral part of evidence to this day and that was back in 1934. Reported sightings would continue to be made and some people became really, really dubious and you, they, they might be an unreliable source. However, other people reported sightings and there is no motive that they had to lie about it. It's up to you whether you believe them or not, I guess. Then, as technology improved, a scientific approach was taken a little bit more. So. A mass of hoaxes did ruin the legacy for many, but by the 1960s, researchers believed that Loch Ness was deserving of some serious scientific study. And of course, in the 1960s, this was a decade of science and technology. Obviously, humans reached the moon during this time, so it seemed pivotal, it seemed very believable that they also might capture a monster during this era. So underwater microphones, sonar devices, and miniature submarines were all deployed. There was sort of little success from this, but they did capture some sort of images which people are still a bit sceptical of, but they did capture something. Then in 1962, the Loch Ness Phenomena Investigation Bureau was established and they actually set up sort of an on-ground surveillance next to Urquhart Castle and as the technology improved, they would put more things in place just to try and gain some evidence that Nessie existed. They also placed an acoustic screen across the breadth of the loch which would record any object that sort of passed through and in a two week period several large mobile contacts were made whose size and behaviour de denied scientific explanation. Then in 1972 sonar contact was made and the spectacular flipper photograph appeared which I'll pop up here and from this a scientific name was developed for Nessie. I'm going to butcher this. It's, it's obviously Latin. It's Nessiterias. Rhombopetrix. I'm really sorry for butchering that but anyway more importantly this translates into the wonder of the nest with the diamond shaped fin and it also allowed Nessie to become a protected wildlife species under British law which is really important because if anyone had captured her obviously the risk of someone wanting her as a trophy would be high, so this protected her status as an actual species. Unfortunately, some scientists and researchers still really dismissed this evidence that was gathered, so it was still an inconclusive thing, whether Nessie existed or not. So really, by this point, with all of this gathered, how can people deny her existence? Well, many don't believe that it is real, solid, empirical evidence that has been proven. Many eyewitnesses would of course be unreliable, many wanted their moment of fame, they wanted to say they'd seen Nessie and they might have genuinely believed they did but perhaps what they saw wasn't true. Some theories are that sightings might have in reality been things like floating tree trunks, other animals or irregular wave patterns 
And one really good theory is that rather than seeing the outline of Nessie, it potentially, I'll pop up a picture here, might have been elephants swimming in the loch, travelling circuses often pass through, and when they would take sort of a rest stop, they would let the elephants cool off down in the loch. And of course, when you see this shape, you could see how the outline might be mistaken for the creature. Also, the excitement and anticipation of seeing Nessie might trick your brain into making you genuinely believe that you have seen something like this. And this can go for scientists too. People genuinely might have thought they seen something because of all the hype around it, but in reality it might have been something entirely more ordinary. And then combine this with actual hoaxes that people had. People would doctor photos, people would stage images, people would do all these things to try and get either fame or money or anything out of it. So these two things combined sort of make people believe that people have never actually really seen Nessie. But if you're like me and you do believe that there is a Nessie, is there a sort of more plausible explanation other than her being a monster? Well, the main one is that she might actually be a dinosaur. The appearance of her with the long neck and the multiple humps on the back, very similar to the plesiosaur. Did I say that right? Plesiosaur? I think so. Which is a large prehistoric marine reptile which did roam the ocean around 65 million years ago. But it's believed that they did become extinct, obviously the same as like all dinosaurs. And is this impossible? Well, not really, because scientists actually believe that another sort of creature, a deep water fish called the Colacanth? Colacanth? Oh god had been extinct for the same length of time, only to discover in 1938 that some still existed. However, there are still a lot of issues surrounding this dinosaur theory. Loch Ness in its current form only came into being 10,000 years ago, after being frozen solid for 20,000 years during the sort of ice age. So how could she have got there from that long ago if it was frozen solid? How would that work? They would have probably found sort of fossils and stuff which nothing like that existed there. And also at 5 degrees Celsius Loch Ness seems too cold for the warm blooded reptile and there's also uncertainty around whether the bone structure matches up. So there is all the evidence Decades later, there's still no truth to the mystery. Over a thousand people have reported sightings of Nessie. So could all those people be wrong? Well, that's up to you. Nessie still remains an unsolved mystery for just now. I personally believe that she does exist. I think it's a very nice tale of Scottish heritage. I think it's a great image of popular culture. And it's just, it's nice to think that something lives in there. But you know what? Maybe it's for the best that we'll never know because it means that Nessie can remain safe. People think that she hides in sort of underwater caves that exist around Loch Ness and it's such a deep body of water that it's perfectly possible something could live there. But I just hope that if she does exist, she stays probably in the loch safe away from people harming her because humans unfortunately will want to get their own benefit out of it. So I like to think that she does exist and uh, I don't need solid, more solid proof than we have to believe that. I, I like the story, I love the legend. And let me know in the comments down below what you think. Do you think that Nessie exists or not? Very good conspiracy theory, um, but I like to believe in it. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. And also let me know if this is more con if you want me to make more content around Scotland like this. I have some ideas. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll be back soon for more Scottish content. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.